Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Chris, and then we got my friend Kerry, who has his YouTube channel by the name of Cosmic Cognition. Go check him out. Subscribe to my man's channel right here, cause you're gonna learn a whole bunch of uh, interesting stuff. Now. I will try. I will try. Right, this guy's way better than me when it comes to YouTube, right? He's just trying to be modest. What's what are we talking about today, Chris? So we're the, today's topic is going to be: Should you go to college? Damn, bro, you making me want to tell my story. Really. You want me to go in? Yeah, go in, bro. All right, I'll go in. Here's my thing. I was in high school, and I wouldn't say I was a terrible student. I was definitely smart enough to do well, but I was all over the place, right? I didn't necessarily care about my books, right? I graduated from high school with something like a three-point, right? I probably could have done a lot better. The problem is my family pushed me to go to college, right? I didn't immediately want to go to college, but I did, right? First, I started off with physics. And I said, I don't know he about did physics. Change your major like yeah, this guy time, changed. Bro. This guy changed my mind. I'm kind of pissed about it too. I'm not gonna be mad at you, bro. It's the, the end is near, bro. We graduate in a couple months, so you a know month what? And a half. Dude, it's, it's not coming even a, so not fast. Even a month. It's coming so fast, yeah. bro. But here's the thing. I switched to engineering, and for me, anybody in the field of engineering is automatically doing a lot better than the average person coming out of college. Can you explain to people why you think I might feel that way? All right, so to put it bluntly, people that go into fields that are you know STEM related, such as um, various science fields, technology fields, engineering, mathematics, uh, you know, and also medical fields, when they graduate from college, it's a lot easier for them to find. Uh, I wouldn't even say jobs, just like because I think there's a difference between having a job and having a career. They find careers, high paying careers, where they're able to sustain themselves and their loved ones, and. You look at people who go to college and major in things such as art history, um, English sociology, um, some of the other, um, you know, low rung degrees, uh, communications. And when he says when he says low rung degrees, he means green degrees that are taken by individuals and and in just abundance, overabundance. It's oversaturated. Oh yeah, right? bro. Like, Even yeah. a business degree at this point is almost oversaturated. Mm, I, I would say that when it comes to business. And uh, um, because my girlfriend's uh, parents are both like accountants, they said that if you want to go into business, the only thing that you should be going into business for is accounting. Like that's the only business field where there's always a high demand. Unless you're doing something like mathematical finance or finance, financial, like programming based finance. But at that point in time, you're basically a computer scientist with a mathematics background. Yeah. We're yeah. doing applied, yeah. applied finance. But that, and, then at the, and then when you get into a conversation like that, you're saying, well, what do I want? Right. Is college for me isn't necessarily the full question. You have to punch through that and say, is the career outlook afterwards for me? Right. You can say that that guy working that Wall Street job that's stressed out, losing hair, making 250K a year. Bro, if I made 250K a year, bro. Like, you said you'd take the stress for a few years? Bro, like what? 250K? Would you take the stress for two or three years? What's what stress? You making two hundred fifty thousand? Why are you stressed out? Right. I mean, let's be realistic. Those people, some of them have suicidal tendencies. Fuck out of here, bro! I ain't killing myself. I'm making that much money. (laughs) And that's the thing, though. You have to weigh it out. What's your personality type like? Can you sit in a cubicle for so long? Can you do numbers, run numbers all day for two hundred fifty thousand dollars? For two hundred fifty k, you do that. You can get out of that job in three years flat. You already have the salary of a working person. Who took a different type of major than you working seven or eight years right that basically gives you a five-year buffer of like money to time ratio to figure out what else you want to do so chris well, are you talking about like the people who made two hundred fifty thousand dollars? because i don't think that's a good I, i'm just saying that that's a high-end that, example right yeah but if you talk people, about somebody who comes out with a regular engineering degree on average people who Start off and then like like you know we're both my state. Give them a state in particular. So like we live in the state of Ohio. We're both engineering students, and we'll probably start off making around like fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year. Now, if you look at someone who goes to college for let's say English, sociology, um, communications, some of those majors, and look, I don't have nothing against those people who want to do those things, but don't complain when you when you're done with college and you can barely find a job in your field. Like, I know people who graduate from college in communication, they work at Starbucks. No lie. Like, they literally work at a coffee shop because they can't find jobs in their fields. And, um, yes, it also has to do with the person or an individual. But then at the end of the day, too, if 
that person doesn't have any real world skills, then why would someone want to hire them? And it doesn't mean that you can't be great or you aren't a great person or you're not an intellectual if you don't pick these majors. Mm -hmm. It just means on average from a statistical perspective, you're better off picking these majors if you do go to college, right? If you go to college for engineering, you're better off on average, you're more likely on average to get a job that's gonna help facilitate whatever lifestyle you wanna live, as opposed to the average communication person come out. Now, obviously there are differences, right? Like, uh, I mean, if you look at a sports commentator, right? Mm -hmm. He might have gone into sports management and then gone into like communications or something like that. It's a hybrid degree that periodically and a very small distribution can get you a nice job. If you look at the baseline for a good job based off of an undergraduate like degree, the, median, the, the high stuff. median income, you're looking at programming, mathematics, engineering, other sciences, finances, uh, medicine, yeah. along these lines. And then also, too, it's just the when you're in college or whatever, you just have to continuously, you know, uh, uh, like sharpen your skills. And also you have to find new skills because, um, yeah, I'm an engineering student, but then also I am a, I have a business minor and I have a professional sales minor where, the, excuse me, the business minor, uh, I took an accounting class and I can, you know, balance a, a, like the books or whatever. I know how to like, you know, debit and- it makes you more valuable to a company too. Yeah. And then also like with the professional sales, since I have, I'm a very outgoing person, I'm able to, you know, do business negotiations between two different companies when they're doing like technical. And a liaison so. in that kind of situation is definitely getting a lot of buff for bucks, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So I guess what I would say to that situation too is, you can't just solely define yourself off of a college major either, can you? No, you can't. But I will say that a lot of these college degrees, you know, it's just like, once again, yeah, it's a person, but then it's also the skills that you're learning and if they are marketable in the real world. So, you know, yeah, you can go to the University of Akron and major in music or, I don't know, like theater or something, and, and, that's, and that's fine. But You can do great and make brilliant stuff. But... Are you going to be able to pay back your loans if you take them out? One last thing before I'm, I'm finished because I'm out of stuff to say. One last thing I'll say is, and I've heard this from a lot of people, is what you're going to college for something that you'd be willing to do for free for a year. And what I mean when I say that is, are you passionate enough about I got that bills thing? paid. I got bills back. Hey, listen, listen to this, though. If you want to be at the top of the game, and I hear a lot of people say this, do you have enough intrinsic passion and drive for it to do it for free. And and this 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 comes up a lot in different motivational workshops, but my the main reason I say that is if you really want it, go do it. Go be that communications major, go be a musician, go be a theater person because the person who really wants it in that area is most likely to succeed. If you're an engineer and you don't even really want it, you're going to be fine. That doesn't sound fair, but at the same time, it's what our society needs. Yeah, and in, in, in closing, the, the, the general takeaway from this video is that if you want to go to college, make sure that you go to the um, business uh, labor statistics website, various occupations that have job growth. That's true. You know, if you're, if you're majoring in something that has a negative 20% uh, outlook for the next 10 years, then it's probably not a good idea not to go to school idea. for it. <laughs> and also, if you live in a state where there might only be like 100 positions and there's like a thousand people graduating a year in that field and you know you have and if you want to stay in your state and you don't want to like move across the country where all those jobs are then maybe you should reconsider but a lot of like these these kids coming out of college they don't understand that you know when you take out 50 60 eighty thousand dollars in loans that you're gonna to have to pay that back you know there's no defaulting on your debt unless you just flee the country and I think even in most countries that are friendly to the U.S., um, your debt would probably follow you to your new country as well. And uh, that's, a, that's a topic for another video. Yeah, that's a topic for another video. But just, you know, when it comes to going to college, you, you know, and then another, another thing that I want to say before I end this is that you can also look at trade schools. There's nothing wrong with going to, you know, a, a trade school because these people, they make a lot of, they make good money. And 
you can you can come out of a trade school in two years doing welding or uh, or like like a, being an electrician or work HVAC. Yeah, and you could make fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, and it's much cheaper. Uh, for a lot of people, it's an easier route to go, and I would recommend that over going to college for a social science degree. But hey, to each his own. At the end of the day, it's your decision. But your decision has um, effects and consequences to them. So you always have to keep that in mind. And um, that's all I have to say. This is uh, Chris. You tore that up, man. You tore it up. Good job. And, and this is my dude, Kerry. He's Cosmic Cognition. He, please go to his channel and subscribe to him. And, uh, yeah, that's all we got to say. Peace. About to drink a beer now, man. Let's go. <laughs>